So I think we can all agree that Star Wars never gets a day off. It is constantly, constantly subjected to a stream of terrible ideas. And for all the terrible content that we have coming from uh, Disney Star Wars lately, I would say that, uh, well, we're had a high point for controversial news. Uh, what's truly great right now is we have a bunch of reputable news sources, some pop culture websites like That Park Place, Fandom Pulse, Bounding Into Comics, that actually give us uh, material on the regular that's reliable, even if it's coming from the rumor mill. In particular, if it's coming from the rumor mill. And right now, there are so many different subjects that are being covered on these sites that it's almost impossible to keep up. And I think that they would agree. In fact, I know. And I've been a contributor on almost all of these and uh, probably will be contributing in some way, probably in video form with uh, Fandom Pulse, but we'll see how that works out. Uh, so today we're going to be navigating um, through a galaxy of recent credible rumors surrounding the upcoming Star Wars film by Sean Levy, not the uh, Charmin Obeyed Chinoy thing, and its connection to uh, this Disney Ridley's Ray character, which is rather surprising. Um, this is a rumor I think that's going to hit warp speed and add to, well, some fire that we'll get to here in just a moment. So popping in right now, we have the article coming up from uh, That Park Place. And uh, of course, it's written by our friend John F. Trent over there who does a wonderful, wonderful job. And uh, first up, Disney's Disney's Ray is, is obviously set uh, to go, but it's possible that Levy could um, replace Charmin Obeyed Achoy, according to the uh, to the uh, article here. And if you look at it, this is going to make a lot of sense, especially after uh, Charmin made herself so popular with all of us recently. And the speculation out there is more well stronger than the force as a matter of fact uh but i would have to think that based on this article that charmaine uh, uh charmaine is gone I, I don't know how you could retain her she is pretty much you know the worst thing to happen to star wars uh that i could even think of but let's book through this article real quick uh they do a great job over here it says a new rumor claims that disney Rid ridley's ray is connected to sean levy's upcoming star wars film and that levy could replace charmaine obeyed Chinoy, if things sour with her. If things sour with her, well, let me tell you, I think they're more than a little bit sour. Um, in fact, I, I think that they, they're long past that, and I have a feeling that she finally found the door on rumors that she wasn't going to be a popular choice. Um, we're going to delve deeper into this, of course, but um, everything seems to be lining up with uh, Sean Levy's vision uh, for the saga. Uh, we could have a directorial switcheroo, in my opinion, and um, you're going to see that uh, an older Ray will be training Jedi um, is going to be maybe maybe the thing that they 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 get rid of, and uh, you you could see a, a completely different kind of thing. But we'll continue on with the article. And again, the rumor itself doesn't even come from that part place. It comes from this this particular podcast uh, with this, uh, well, well, somebody who's fairly accurate and Jeff Snyder, and uh, a complete, uh, well, goofball, in my opinion, of uh, this this John LaRo the, the Roca guy or whatever. He's He's not exactly uh, uh, beloved by many parties. But anyway, Snyder says that he's, he's told that Sean Levy's project does have an element. Um, I don't know if Ray is front and center, but Ray's character is is in Sean Levy's movie. Now, is it Daisy Ridley's or Ray or an older Ray? Uh, he said he heard um, rumors back in the day about maybe Helen Mirren being uh, positioned as an older Ray. So I don't know. Uh, in Sean Levy's movie, if Ray is the lead character or Ray is Daisy Ridley's age, or someone could be could be in their 40s or 50s, uh, or somebody who's 70 or 80, like Helen Merritt. I don't know. Well, okay. Uh, Snyder said that uh, Charmaine uh, is still on board, uh, but y y you know how Lucasfilm, Lucasfilm goes through directors quickly. This is something I've been talking about for a while, and if you check out the streams over on uh, Mr. H's uh, H-Cast on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we've talked about this quite a bit. Um, in fact, I think in a recent video, I said I think there have been like 17 directors that have been listed for Star Wars films, and certainly not that many that have made them, um, and obviously writers and other people involved in these projects. Um, it seems like... Uh, 
the current uh, leader of Lucasfilm likes to let go people. She likes to announce a lot of things, but not make them and fire people from projects they were hired for or supposedly hired for anyway. But anyway, so um, so the hire has been questioned is an interesting part of this comment. It says she doesn't have a ton of experience. No kidding. That's the thing that we've all been calling out. So it does, for whatever reason, go sour she, or, and she either quits or is fired or whatever. For whatever reason, she exits the project, depending on scheduling, because again, Sean Levy is one of the busiest people in Hollywood. It's my understanding that Sean Levy could either slip in to direct that movie or Sean Levy's movie comes the next movie or maybe Sean Levy's movie could be folded into Charmaine's movie I don't know well I would want to get very far away from uh, from the Charmaine obeyed Chinois vision of Star Wars but um He's clearly interested in exploring Ray and that stuff. So the Ray movie suddenly needs a director. He may be the guy they turn to since he, they're already in the business with him. So there you go. Uh, it, re, it was reported that Levy was working on a Star, Star Wars film back in November 2022. And this was by Deadline's Mike Fleming and, and Justin Kroll. By the way, great writing here, John. Good job. Deadline can reveal that Sean Levy is uh, in talks to come on board to develop and direct a Star Wars film. It makes a lot of sense. And of course... You know, here's a picture of him along with some other stars in the Deadpool 3 film. A couple of those people you should recognize. Uh, Levy confirmed his involvement in Star Wars at the Toronto Film Festival, telling Collider, uh, we're just starting the process of developing the movie. And the writer strike happened. Well, there you are. So we're in a holding pattern. Uh, he would later tell uh, Variety that uh, Kathy Kennedy brought me on board to make a Star Wars movie. So confirming that. Uh, I want a story and tone that reflects uh, you and your taste is what Kath, uh, Kathy wanted him to do. Um, so we'll have to see again how that goes. But it does appear clear that the Walt Disney Company is invested in the character of Rey, much to most of our chagrin, particularly because she is so divisive but uh might be struggling to figure out how to tell a solid story well it would be a first i would think in the history of disney star wars uh i think uh, i think they they struggle for a solid story and uh well then a solid cast and a solid director to be fair uh the central character uh, of the much maligned disney star wars sequel trilogy um is uh is well somebody I don't think a lot of people want explored further, but hey, that's just my opinion. So the company walked Ray out to the main stage last April, and as we found out later, and I reported on, that was done in a very abbreviated fashion, <laughs> perhaps only a few weeks before it actually happened. Was she uh, propositioned by uh, Kathleen Kennedy? It might have been a few days. We don't know. I mean, the rumor kind of broke uh, again from that park places a WDW Pro, not that not, I mean, just a couple weeks before the actual event. And that was rather surprising. It was one of the times when the scoop from Pro was 100% on. Uh, in fact, to the tune of over 92% of his scoops have been right on. So, I mean, take that, you know, but for what it's worth. But um, the uh, Charmaine Obeid Chinoy directed film would take place 15 years after the events of the Rinse of Soybeans. Um, yeah, it was a terrible film. And, and would see Ray rebuild the Jedi Order, which to that end, I've actually created some artwork for so I can, you know, jump right on top of this when it either comes out or doesn't because it's you know shut down officially. So there's also been multiple scripts. Now, I've heard about this, and uh, so did Pro and many others, that there were multiple scripts. Uh, Damon Lindelof, who was uh, removed from Ch Ch Chinoy's film before April last year, was allegedly working on the older Ray story. Okay. Snyder again piped up uh, here on this podcast saying it sounded like what he wanted to do from what I understand it was 60 years after Rise of Skywalker. So you would need somebody like Helen Mirren to do that. Lindelof supposedly set that 60 years down the line but we now know Disney Ridley is coming back so it ain't going to be 60 years later. Yeah, no kidding. And it'd be like seven to 10 years later. That seems reasonable considering that she's now been separated from that role for a bit and does look older. So uh, what I heard the original idea, I said that there was a black act actor that came attached to the project with Damon. Everyone thinks it's uh, Yahya Abdul-Mateen. It wasn't. Uh, it was not. I confirmed that recently. I don't know who it was, but it wasn't Yahya. Um, he went on to share more details about the script, saying it was supposed to be an older Ray training to Jedi, a man and a woman, uh, who I think would have both been of color. And again, this is another fascination that Lucasfilm has that uh, does not seem to um, 
do anything to service the story, but just services checking some boxes, uh, which I would say that most Star Wars films aren't going to be headed towards, you know, the Oscars as far as winners. Uh, maybe for or maybe for technical things, but certainly not for uh, the performance of the actors, the story, or anything else. Uh, the Oscars seem to be where um, box uh, high, high box office temp, tentpole films go to die. Uh, we'll find that out this year with Barbie, but I'll continue. Uh, now they didn't go out to this actress. Um, this was not offered, uh, but she was the comp. He says. Uh, she was the person when they put together the casting list. This was ideally who we want. It doesn't necessarily mean that the prototype person is the person that gets the casting, but basically older Ray, they're thinking of Helen Mirren. So there you go. So, and this is where we talk about the script. So Scooper, WDW Pro shared details about two other potential scripts Lucasfilm has seen and contemplated regarding the project. And there's the video right there. Thank you for that, John. Um, Again, I'd heard about um, a couple of copies of this. I don't, I wouldn't say there were necessarily scripts, but treatments or concepts. Um, that's probably where I would go. But again, he said, you've detailed that there are two iterations of the Ray script that I'm aware of and can talk about according to rumor. And those are apparently early on in development uh, that Ray would be pregnant with a child and that off screen she would have become pregnant somehow through the force ghost of Kylo Ren. There you go. Uh, they could have. Uh, they could not have Ray be pregnant with any other person than Kylo Ren. Yeah, because you'll lose all those Raylos who, uh, well, very vocally did not enjoy the ending of the film. I'm sure many of you have seen the clip where uh, they, some bad words were uttered out loud, uh, screaming at the screen that they don't like Star Wars anymore because of that. Uh, but again, that's to placate the Raylo fans, as I mentioned. So uh, the daughter was going to be, oh, hang on. Um, and the story was going to push forward uh, to when her child was about nine years old, a daughter. Now, I'd heard the twins story, but we can talk about that maybe later. And that the daughter was going to be training at the new Jedi Temple. And uh, there'll be other Padawans there rebuilding the Jedi Order. So, And uh, that the nine-year-old daughter was going to combine the light and the dark and form a new type of Jedi. Yay. Making the gray Jedi bologna sausage a real thing that I think just kind of defeats the purpose. Um, that's the that's what Hollywood's doing, is trying to give you the, um, uh, the, uh, the don't be good and don't be bad. It's okay to be, you know, both. It's okay to be like us in Hollywood and be, you know, ambiguous about whether or not we want to do good or bad things. Uh, it just kind of depends on our mood, how our narcissism strikes us that day. Anyway, he continued, then they were going to face off against Darth Plagueis. Um, well, apparently he's going to be back. Well, somehow, Darth Plagueis returns. Oh, my goodness. That was the first iteration of the script. So uh, so that was then discarded. They did not feel that that would quell the complaints of Rey being a Palpatine. No, no. And uh, again, I, I'm still going to argue that it was Grandpa Palpatine that uh, would provide any young ones because i really don't think that uh, ben solo was capable of that but eh, whatever they're also concerned that daisy Ruse's character was a side character and that her daughter would be the lead and that was going to be an issue no kidding first of all this is a habit that disney has with any of their brands is taking the primary character and making them the side character in their own film let me tell you fans don't appreciate that if you're going to make a spider-man film and you move him to the side and you bring in all the like the lovely ladies the spiderettes like you're going to see over in madam webb here soon um fans are going to walk away from that i i know i would you probably would too so uh later he later detailed that the script didn't really have a lot of oversight from disney executives by beyond lucasfilm well that's a real problem because we know what the story group is capable of producing and it is unworthy of any kind of screen, big or small. So uh, the second script is the one that Disney became involved in, and that was Ray and Finn fighting against a villain, a new villain who was a combination of uh, a Night Sister and a Sith. So a Sith who had learned to take the powers of the Night Sisters and combined the Force uh, with the magic of witches. This is a terrible idea. <laughs> Putting the supernatural into something that has plenty to deal with as far as that's concerned with the Force doesn't really need to exist. I understand that some people will appreciate that. Some people will definitely buy into it because of some previous uh, 
EU stuff out there. But I'm going to tell you right now, this is not going to jam with most audiences who are just looking for a good versus evil story that they can sink their teeth into, right? Versus wrong, which again, Disney is probably incapable of producing right now because they really are the bad guys trying to push their bad guy vibes on everybody else through entertainment. Uh, Fancy word for that's indoctrination, but we'll move on. So I'm also told that Grogu uh, would make a cameo in both of these and that Grogu had uh, had been scaled back dramatically due to the need of having him to save him for the Mandalorian movie. Ooh, all right. Well, it doesn't sound like either of these films could get made. Um, and they do ask the question here at the end, what do you make of this? I don't make much of it. I don't think it. Uh, I don't think it's going to play out very, very well. But... Um, you're going to see more and more of these kinds of rumors and spin. Some of them are going to be targeted releases or, or intentional quote unquote leaks um, so that they can get a feel for what the audience will and won't ex- accept at this point. Um, Cause they're very much audience driven. Well, if that was the case, Disney, you wouldn't be making this garbage. You wouldn't be trying to tie it into all of these other things. Um, but yeah, so the connection between Daisy Ridley's uh, Ray film and Sean Levy's, uh, the vision is kind of going to blend together. I have a feeling that Obey Genoa is already out. We just don't know it yet. I can't wait to report that news to you when it's 100% confirmed. But you can definitely check out this story on that park place. And on that note, I'll have to ask, uh, what are your thoughts on Daisy Ridley's Ray returning uh, and uh, Sean Levy's potential, uh, well, directorship of this film? Uh, because, uh, well, how could you put this unlikable woman in charge of an amazing Star Wars project would be my question. And uh, on that note, as always, be sure to take care of yourself, take care of others, and until next time, see you.